Welcome along to another Jenny Cam vlog and I'm going to be continuing with my grand tour of all of my model railway locomotives as you'd all asked uh, to see all of these done two parts already if you haven't already seen them uh, go back take a look and you'll see where we're up to so you can see in here we've got uh, another one of these picture pride displays and I've taken the glass case off the front of this uh, really just so you can see them better without reflections on the glass so let's get going shall we so here we are, we can see that we've got the picture pride display, it's a good overview, that's all of the locomotives that are here, and that really is quite a lot. So let's pick a corner, shall we? And let's go up here, one of my favourite types of locomotives, and this is the Hornby X Daypole, uh, X Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway Pug. So we see there, number 51222. And uh, this was, uh, I think this was the second release that Hornby did of the particular model after they acquired it from Daypol. The first release, you've already seen it, 51218. Um, I can't remember where that was actually, but uh, I have got quite a lot of these. Um, they were a personal favourite locomotive for a while. Not really the most reliable for running, uh, but certainly very, very pretty to uh, fill odd crevices in these display cabinets. What have we got here? We've got Duchess of Abercorn, number 6234, in LMS Crimson Lake. And this locomotive, actually, I bought this because when I was growing up, my father had uh, Duchess of Montrose and, more importantly, Duchess of Athol as part of his uh, Humby 003 rail collection. So I always had a soft spot for these locomotives, and it came to my attention quite recently, actually, that uh, I was lacking... Um, having any of these magnificent beasts in my collection so I remedied that when uh, I think it was Hatton's had these on offer and I really do like the LMS Crimson Lake livery so I've quite recently actually gone and tracked down a load of LMS liveried coaches to go with it but certainly this um, is one of my favourite big express locomotives it's, I think it's the most recent uh, Hornby release of this model. They've announced that they're retooling it. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't realise that it needed retooling because this model is a superb model. So it's, it's a little bit in shadow there, which is unfortunate. I don't know how to remedy that. But we'll try and get a close-up there. God, I hate this camera for focusing. It does feel like it's working against me. So... Right, let's move along to the next one. Move along by, nothing to see, or actually plenty to see. Right, this is my Hornby Q1, uh, number 33006, in British Rail Lakecrest livery, ready, factory weathered. And I just really fell in love with this locomotive when I first saw it. Uh, I got this from the now defunct Farmworth Model Centre, pretty much, I think, when it came out um, as a, a type of locomotive. And it was just... It was so different that it, it piqued my interest, so I had to have one, so um, purchased this one, and it's a lovely runner actually. Uh, Hornby pulled out all the bells, whistles and stops to uh, get this done, and really this was about the time when they were showing that yes, they could compete very well, thank you very much, with the offerings from Backman. Uh, so it's a lovely locomotive. The only problem I've got is I think the quartering is ever so slightly out. And it runs fine enough, but it started to wear a, a worryingly large hole in uh, one of the side rods. So it's it's obvious that it's going to need, if it runs a lot more, it's going to need replacement side rods. So it doesn't tend to get run all that much these days, but when it does run, it does actually run very, very well. In fact, I've just spotted, that's off the track, I'll fix that. Next to that, we've got the Hornby again. This is the 282 Mikado Tank uh, 72XX. And I did a box opening and review, actually, of this. And it has featured on some of the Trains Going By videos. 
but it lives up here on the very top of the cabinet and I just really like these tank locomotives. When they first came out um, I decided I really wanted to get one of the, they, they did a 42XX, 52XX and 72XX and I just thought the 282 tank really was something special. Um, there was a lot of criticism of Hornby when it came out because of the design clever thing and really the first release of these locomotives were the epitome of the design clever. But this is where they, um, you know, in all credit to Hornby, they addressed some of those concerns. And this is the second run of the locomotive addressing some of the deficiencies that became apparent. That's there, a Backman Jubilee, and uh, is it a Jubilee? I think it's a Jubilee. And uh, this one's called Hong Kong. Now, I bought this, it's in British Rail um, Brunswick Green with the early crest. I bought it when Hattons were really um, giving these out. Well, I don't say giving it. I bought this when Hattons were having a sale and it was reduced quite dramatically. I, I bought a whole load of things. Actually, I think I did a video where I went through some of the things I bought. I have a feeling it may also have been in the company of that Class 42, Kelly, uh, but I couldn't swear to that right now. But certainly, it's a good performer, and I do quite like this locomotive. Now, underneath, something special. This is where my National Railway Museum, Deltic, uh, lives at the moment and we sit there in all its um, French blue glory. That is wonderful. It's a locomotive that always draws people's eyes and I did do a box opening and review of it when I first got it but uh, certainly the Class 55 production Deltics uh, I've always had a soft spot for so when the opportunity arose to buy this I looked at it a few times and ummed and ahed and Zoe said you know, you know what you've looked at it a lot you probably ought to just buy it. And sometimes when I am an R and um, think about things for ages and get obsessed by them and then buy them, I lose interest and I suddenly think, well, what? I don't really know why I wanted it. But with the Deltic here, I never got that. There's no buyer's remorse whatsoever and it is a fabulous model. Here as well, next to it, another National Railway Museum Special Commission, Director Class Great Central Railway. Um, and uh, this is Butler Henderson. Uh, the model they did of the real one that survives in the National Collection. Um, it's it's one which I really quite liked, the, the livery, and certainly, as I've said before, pre-grouping liveries, they push my buttons, so in a good way. So I had to have myself this. Next to it, oh, now, this locomotive, I think, was the very first pre-grouping liveried locomotive that I actually bought and uh, just see if we can get in there nice and close. This is the Robinson 8K, uh, later became the LNER 04. The Rail Operating Division uh, standardised on this as their heavy freight locomotive during the First World War. So there's actually quite a lot of these uh, got sent out around the world and certainly um, there's I think two survivors out in Australia of all places uh, that have survived to become preserved plus this one in the UK. So it's a lovely model and when I saw photographs of this leaked out I actually approached Backman and uh, asked them who'd commissioned it and they told me it was the Railway Museum so I was just waiting for them to announce this and I was one of the first people to buy it and no regrets about it this is just a fabulous livery. Next to it another National Railway Museum Special Commission this is the Midland Compound uh, number 1000 there in the Midland Railway Maroon and I think this is the livery that it uh, it wore this for the was it the this the Liverpool and Manchester cavalcade or the Stockton and Darlington cavalcade I, I don't remember which it was early 80s I think um, not one that I attended but subsequently you see a lot of pictures of some really quite esoteric designs trundling up and down near Rainhill. I think, yeah, it might have been the Rainhill one. But certainly this is a fabulous model and still bizarrely enough in stock at the Railway Museum and um, it's such an underrated model. Um, it's, it's brilliant and I really don't know why it hasn't sold out. In the same way that the Deltics, uh, the uh, Robinson 8K and Butler Henderson have, um, it's really uh, an unsung hero of their range. 
Right, going down to the next row. I got this actually uh, partially because it was such a good price and partially because it's also it's a local locomotive. Uh, it used to shunt the carriage sidings just up from uh, Manchester, Victoria. Next to that, uh, I think this is Cheltenham Model Centre Special Commission. Uh, number 24, it's the Fowler 3F. Uh, nicknamed Bagnalls on the SDJR system, the Somerset and Dorset Joint Railway. Bagman have actually produced this exact same locomotive in exactly the same livery, except I think it's number 23 is the main catalogue version. Still out there at a, actually what is now quite a good price. So I don't think the non-special commission version sold all that well, but certainly this sold out ever so quickly. But I was lucky enough to pick this up second hand at a model railway exhibition in Manchester for what's actually a very favourable price, even for the time. Next to that, another purchase from second hand from model railway exhibitions, from uh, one in Lee actually. Uh, but I got this at a knockdown price because the cab windows had fallen into the cab. It's a former collector's club, Backman Collector's Club Special Commission of the Port of Felixstowe Shunter, which actually I believe has now ended up at the National Railway Museum at Shildon. Uh, but um, I got it for a knockdown price. It was pristine in the box, box except the windows had fallen in. And uh, I actually fixed it that uh, fault later in the show. Moving on to here, we have another uh, Cheltenham Model Centre Special Commission. And this is the 3F Ginty, but in the Midland Railway Maroon. But this does actually date from LMS time. Uh, so we've got the number there, 16440. Again, this is one which did s uh, sell out from the Cheltenham Model Centre, but not quite as quickly as the Somerset and Dorset joint one. Now this, I think, was the first limited edition locomotive I ever bought brand new. And this was through the Batman Collectors Club, and it's their faded weathered uh, Class 8 08507. And it was just, for me, it was such a great livery. It's a shame they haven't produced more locomotives in this very washed out faded blue. And even actually, if you look at the wasp stripes, the yellow there is a lovely matte colour. And I just think it's brilliant. It's one of my favourite shunting locomotives. Next to that, it does look like a run-of-the-mill uh, 3F Ginty, but actually this is the Transport Models of Preston Special Commission. Um, they uh, picked the what had been a long-term resident of Preston and was actually used as the Preston uh, Railway Station uh, pilot for some time, number 47472. And actually it was probably, with hindsight, not the greatest choice commercially for them because it did take a while to sell out. But I believe it has now. Now, this is the other locomotive that I bought with Starlet. This is the Longmore Military Railway Class... Uh, I can never remember whether it's, it's supposedly nominally a Class 10 or a Class 11, but it's actually the Bankman Class 8. Uh, and this is Basra um, in the Longmore Military Railway livery. Now, given how quickly some of the other Longmore Military Railway liveried austerities, for example, sold out. This actually hung around for a surprising long time and in the great model zone wind down I got it in style at a really good price. Next to that uh, my love of industrial locomotives, well certainly industrial liveries. This is the 3F Ginty from the Backman's Collectors Club but in the uh, livery of W Pepper and Sons, the coal concentration uh, point in somewhere near Huddersfield I think. Funnily enough, you can still find these occasionally brand new, not from Backman, as a Collector's Club exclusive it sold out long ago, but uh, what I have found is that some model shops do have it in stock at um, about £55, £56, something like that, so if you hunt around you can still find this brand new for less than what the main catalogue range Ginty now goes for. London, Brighton and South Coast, I think it's an E4. Uh, this was a, a production model which surprisingly is still in stock all around the place. I suspect that buoyed by the uh, success of the South Eastern and Chatham Railway uh, C-Class in the full SECR livery, Bankman probably produced rather too many of these and they didn't sell quite so well. So they're still out there, still available. The Bankman Collectors Club ver version uh, in the similar livery, but with Birch Grove, I think it is, on the tanks. 
I believe that has sold out now, but certainly this can still be got for um, quite a, a discounted price. Next to that, this is a Hornby Collector's Edition. It did go on general sale, but it's um, modelled on the preserved example in the Railway Museum, I believe. Uh, it's the M7, but in the original London and South Western Railway livery. And I do really like this locomotive. And uh, Tim at Arga Arcadia in Shaw still has some in stock. So that's where this came from. It has apparently sold quite well, but he did buy a lot in. So there's uh, two or three still left there. Um, if this is a variant that you um, really like and are looking for, tell him I sent you. I don't get a discount or anything, but uh, I think he just... Uh, uh, it's nice. Um, it's nice to get the name check, I suppose. <laughs> oh, be still, my my pulsating ego. This was a Backman Collectors Club exclusive. It's the Somerset and Dorset Joint Railway. Uh, again, can't remember whether it's the 3F or the 4F, but it's number 58. Um, this actually sold out. I think it's it's gone down as being one of the best selling, well, certainly quickest selling, Backman Collectors Club exclusives. And I was quite lucky. I knew it was coming. So I ordered it on the first day and did get one, and it's a lovely locomotive. Next to that, the National Railway Museum, uh, Great Northern Railway Atlantic 442. It was quite an expensive locomotive. I was feeling very flush at the time, but um, I'll be honest with you, it was right at the upper limit of what I, I am comfortable spending on a steam locomotive, 179 I think it was. And I paid up front uh, and was, reasonably happy to get this because it is a very good model but also it's supporting uh, a museum that does great work but certainly as the main range locomotives are reaching and beaching this price bracket um, I have to say I haven't bought anywhere near as much as I used to but that is a lovely locomotive there again pre-grouping a uh, real soft spot for that now next to that we've got my one and only class 17 clayton but in the livery that it carried in later life when in industrial use at uh, ribble cement uh, so this was done as a limited edition of a thousand examples <laughs> yeah by helgen limited edition it was not it hung around for quite some time and was actually heavily discounted from a lot of places i bought this example at a, a very reasonable price from a friend who uh, was left it in a, a bunch of stuff and uh, just really needed rid of it it was no use to them and not something that they wanted so i helped them out and helped myself out in a way because it was a livery that i did actually quite like so that's the story behind this one. It has had a replacement motor, but only uh, the previous owner did that, not me. So it does run very, very well. Next to that, we've got, this is actually an original Daypole uh, X Lancashire. Well, actually, no, it's not the X Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway Pug. It is the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway Pug. And this is one of the liveries that they put out. And it's probably actually... You know, I talked about the Robinson 8Ks, there's the first pre-grouping locomotive I bought, brand new, but this I got secondhand from the Farnworth Model Centre, probably about 16 years ago now. Um, it doesn't run particularly well, but it doesn't matter to me, because it's sitting pretty there as number 19, and I think this is the other surviving Lancashire and Yorkshire pug. And actually it's unique in that I think it was sold out of service by the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway, and never even made it to LMS ownership, but survived because I think it may even have been at St. Helens Glass in St. Helens um, that uh, it was in use as a shunter, and that, that's how the locomotive survived. I could be wrong on that. I think there was certainly one of the ex-Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway Pugs did end up at St. Helens Glass, but I'm not entirely sure whether it was this one. Right, next row. Aha, the Backman C Classes. That's the simplified livery that they brought out after the phenomenal success of the one I'm just going to jump to, this one. And to be honest, at the price it was at, it was it was something that was always going to sell well, but it really captured people's imaginations. And this sold out. It's probably the most successfully selling uh, standard production release model, but I suspect that there was only 500 of these ever actually made. So it's as limited as some of the limited editions. Certainly it sold out very, very quick and went on to command silly money on eBay. 
The market has calmed a little bit since then, but certainly they're still um, one of the most expensive locomotives to find secondhand from the Backman stable. But this is the version that they brought out afterwards, and it did hang around a lot longer. Um, it's a simplified lining, so it's probably less expensive for them to produce, but it represents the class a little bit later on in the pre-1923 period. Next to that, this was a Batman Collectors Club exclusive, and this is in the First World War uh, grey that SECR locomotives carried. And the large, loca the large number there on the tender, 689, the reason that the locomotive numbers were painted so prominently like that was apparently to aid recognition of the locomotives at night in poor lighting, uh, and it mirrored uh, some of the American practices of the day. It's not the lo only locomotive, actually, that I've got in this livery, it has to be said. And somewhere over here, that's... Well, if you remember in the last video, I talked about my um, special presentation N classes. One in the Southern Railway, Monsell Green, that you saw, but then there's this is the other of the pair. Number 810 in the SECR Wartime Grey. But let's see now, what else have we got? Ah, this is uh, City of London. Now, I do regret not buying City of Truro when the National Railway Museum uh, brought it out. It's something that they, they brought out two different versions of it and they both sold very, very well. And um, they were the beginnings of the National Railway Museum exclusive models. But Bankman certainly uh, did, after I think it was a pre-designated period, were able to release their own versions now. As City of Truro itself is the only locomotive from this class that actually survived beyond the Great Western Railway's ownership, um, they were quite limited on, on liveries, so this is actually a pre-1923 Great Western Railway livery. In fact, I think that may even be pre-First World War. But certainly, um, I decided I had to own the locomotive. It is a lovely runner, actually, uh, but... In lieu of City of Truro, I went for City of London. Uh, there was also City of Bath at the same time, but it had a slightly later Great Western Railway livery, and I just preferred this very ornate, very obviously Victorian livery that this is wearing. Next to that, um, I did do a box opening and review on this. This is the Oxford Rail Adams Radial. Now, it's a really good locomotive with a very keen price, and despite its... Um, it, it's got a few failings. But as a first offering, at a very keen price, I have to say, Oxford Rail won out, in my view, and Hornby were left holding the baby, bringing their model to the market late at a much higher price, and they've actually already had to start discounting down to the levels that the Oxford Rail one um, is being sold at. Oxford Rail have just recently released the East Kent Railway liveried version of this, which looks quite nice, and I'm in two minds whether to get one. But uh, certainly, I think Southern Railway modellers were disappointed from the initial releases from both camps, actually. Did rather neglect, neglect the Southern Railway, but there we go. Underneath, uh, we already talked about the other example of this, the 242 Aspinall tank in Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway livery. My personal favourite is the other one that you saw in the previous video, but here's the first release that did sell out quite quickly from the Railway Museum. We've already talked about that one. Next to that, right, we've got a pair of Hornby X Daypole uh, Terriers. I've got a real soft spot for this dinky little Victorian class. They're not an accurate model, not by a long way. They're a bit of a, a hybrid of the various aspects of all the different versions of the A1 and the A1X classes. But I like them. I think they capture the magic of those locomotives really well. And for a long, long time, they were dirt cheap. In fact, even now, um, the one on the left is freely available for around the £66 mark, which isn't too bad. They have an older style mechanism, so slow running is not quite so easy to control, and they're not DCC ready, but certainly I think they hold up well for the time. Uh, Wadden there was one actually that I bought about 15 years ago, so I'm just trying to get it in focus. It's actually very difficult, I think because of the way the, the lettering's highlighted. But I bought that about 15 years ago, and it's the same model as uh, what's coming out now. And there's such a wealth of different livery variations. I think that's the first time 
the South Eastern and Chatham Railway liveried version has appeared, but because they were sold out of service and cropped up on small lines, absorbed into other lines, they've carried so many colourful liveries. They are one of those locomotive classes, a bit like the Hunslet Austerity, which just keeps on giving. Now, another Batman Collectors Club exclusive, the Robinson 9J, and it does escape me now what its LNER classification is. I think J11 or something like that. But certainly in the Great Central Railway livery, it matches the 8K slash 04 really nicely. It's a good runner, and I was really, really pleased when this turned up. So it takes pride of place here in the display cabinet. Next to that, this was a main range product uh, from Backman, and it is the, I think this is the 4F actually, but it's in Midland Railway Black. There's not really a lot to be said about it. Did a box opening and review. It's a lovely locomotive, but I think it hasn't really sold quite so well as other things. Although, uh, it has to be said that the availability of a ready-to-run Midland Railway brake van will probably help sales of this an awful lot, because that's one of the things. Nice locomotives are one thing in pre-grouping liveries, but where are the things for them to pull? Right, we're on the bottom, bottom shelf, so nearly there. Let me just try and focus. There, I've alluded to my ownership of one of these, but 03179, this is the cut-down Class 3 from Model Zone. Let me just focus in there. And I just love this colourful livery on the Class 3. It's the only Class 3 uh, in British Rail ownership to carry anything really other than either BR Green or BR Blue. So it's something a little bit different. And in fact, the real 03179 also carried Wagon Livery, W-A-G-N. And um, it was available as a Collector's Club Special Edition model in that livery, but I chose not to buy it. Um, I really, uh, after privatisation, I have to say, I start to lose interest. Next to that, we've got uh, Ethel 3. This is a Class 25 from Batman. It actually runs as an ordinary Class 25. You can run this as a locomotive, but it was made especially for the London Trade Fair. Um, I got it through the Blackman Collectors Club. Uh, but it's the only 25 to wear into city livery, albeit as uh, an electric train heat X locomotive. And these are what we used on um, things like the Fort William Sleeper to provide electric train heat to the train before the Class 37 4s uh, came into existence. Uh, their primary reason was to be able to provide electric train heat um, which dispensed with the need for these. There were three of these, though only this one, I believe, carried this livery, although I stand to be corrected on that. Next to that, the Robinson 04. Um, this is in its BR late crest period, guys. Special commission from Hattons. Now, they made the mistake at one point of accidentally reducing the price of this in their sale down to £72, which was the same price as the run-of-the-mill catalogue version. It stayed like that for maybe a week, I think, before somebody realised, and then it shot up to £112. But during that week, eagle-eyed me was incredibly lucky to snaffle this at the bargain price of £72. So... I'm afraid uh, the bargain maniac in me won out and I did buy one. And it's a lovely locomotive. They do run exceptionally well. But Hatton still has it in stock. It hasn't been a fabulously fast seller for them, unfortunately. But there we go. Next to that, one of the rail exclusive Class 3s. Now, I bought this second hand. I got it at uh, an exhibition in Manchester. And... Um, it was a case of, it was offered to me by, uh, I think it was Durham Trains of Stanley had a stall there. And it was pristine mint in the box with the special outer box that they came commissioned um, in. And it was at a price that would have been, quite frankly, um, very attractive, even for the regular run-of-the-mill Class 3s. But to have this with the Witch's Hat Conical Exhaust, I thought, you know what? I thought about getting these when they were first announced. There was two from Rail Exclusives. And I ummed and ahed and decided not to. And then there it was on a plate at a reduced price. And I thought it'd be rude not to buy it. So I did. And it spent that uh, weekend running on Grove Street Yard, actually. Next to that, Waterman Railways Class 20. 
Um, it was done, I think, this particular version. Uh, the Backman Collectors Club sold this, but it had originally been produced for the London Toy Fair, I think. Uh, but certainly they subsequently did a model of the other Waterman Rowers Class 20. Can't tell you the number, but it was during the period when uh, I'd lost my way a bit. I, I had other things I was I was dealing with, and I kind of... I took my finger off the pulse of model railway, so I missed out on the matching pair to this. But it is a good runner, uh, as all Batman Class 20s are. Next to that, final locomotive. This is the Helgen Class 14, the only one I've got. But in the sort of fictional um, load hall livery, 14701, named Keith, named for Keith Hatton, who uh, tragically um, passed away under a slightly mysterious circumstance. I think he fell from a bal balcony whilst on holiday. Uh, very, very sad. Uh, but certainly this particular commission from Hatton's, a great commission. Uh, they've generally sold pretty well. They did produce quite a lot of different livery options. Um, and this one and the BR Blue, they did 14029, I think, in rail blue. It was a toss-up between the two, but the really interesting livery won out for me. So for this once, I actually turned my back on BR Blue and went for a sectorisation um, era livery, but uh, really pleased with this. It's not actually the greatest of runners. The Halgen Class 14 has a few little niggly faults, one of which is, without adjustment, sometimes the side rods can bind on those uh, uh, crew access ladders, and um, especially on tighter corners. So, with a bit of remedial work, I gather that uh, they can be quite good performers, but certainly this particular example has not been modified. Anyway, there you have it. Um, it took a little bit longer than I thought it would, but then again, it always normally does. So there you have it. This is my model railway collection uh, that I keep in the picture pride display in the lounge area of the house. This is part three of what's going to become a four part series, giving you a tour of my entire model railway locomotive collection. Anyway, it's been uh, great to have you along for the ride. Don't forget to like this video, share it too. And this is me, Jenny Kirk saying until next time you take very good care of yourself. Bye for now.